A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. So recently under a community post, I think it was, subscriber of mine posted this comment right here. And literally two seconds after I saw his comment, I posted this as my reaction to it. Okay, now you might ask yourself, um, how did you know that you have to write nice under this one? And if you ever done basic number theory and the like, you might know what's going on here. Namely, the, basically the answer to his fraction that he gave me, okay, 23 over um, 33, is turning out to be nothing but 0 0.696969 dot 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 dot, up until infinity. Namely, it's a repeating decimal in 69. And this is very nice. And he said that I should make a video on it. And at first I thought, no, I shouldn't do this because <laughs> this is child's play. But then I remembered that I never really did a video on repeating decimals here on this channel. And actually repeating decimals are um, one of my most favorite, favorite parts of teaching in sixth grade at schools because um, it's a very nice introduction from going from um, elementary number theory over to solving linear equations basically. And yeah, this is what we are going to cover today. Namely, how did I know at a glance that 23 over 33 is going to turn into a repeating decimal? The answer at basically the end of the video. And now we are going to go through the process of proving something. Namely, how can we turn a repeating decimal like 0.6969 blah, blah 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 up until infinity into a fraction. And this is actually a very nice easy proof that you can go through, which we are going to go through now. And later, so I think on Monday or something, I'm going to post a proof about basically the, um, the generalized case when you don't have a zero in, in front and when you have the repeating decimals after a few other decimal places right here. I hope you are going to enjoy the video and now we are going to dive right in. So at first what we are going to do is we are going to say we have a certain number r for example. Okay, um, let the number r be defined as a repeating decimal of that form. Meaning it's of the form zero dot something that is going to repeat over time. So let's say we have a digit one, a digit two, blah, 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 up until digit n. Meaning this right here is basically a concatenation in the decimal places. And all of those are going to repeat over time. And we are going to indicate the repetition of those decimal places with a periodic bar over it, okay? It has a certain period, they appear with a certain frequency, one after another. And for simplification purposes, what we are going to do is we're going to say that the concatenation of those digits are nothing but um, p, okay? So let's say this right here is just a periodic part, which is going to repeat up until infinity over time. Okay, so what we are going to do now is we are going to take our r that we're having here and we are going to multiply it with a certain factor of two to the something power such that, and now hear me out, I'm going to motivate this with a numerical example. Let us take the 0 0.69 blah 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 as a example, okay? 69, 69, blah blah blah. We are going to multiply this number by 10 squared. Why are we going to multiply it by 10 squared? Well, here's the reason. Since this decimal part is going to repeat infinitely many times, what we can do is, okay, we, we can say we're going to shift our decimal point two places um, to the right, for example. Okay, we are going to take this decimal point and we're going to move it two places to the right. That way, what we still have is our 696969 repeating, but the periodic part P that we're having here is going to be moved to the very front. This is going to be important later. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply it with two squared because we have two decimal places which are going to repeat infinitely many times all the time, leaving us overall with 69.69, but all of this is going to be periodic yet again. I mean, it, it repeats infinitely many times, so our periodic part, our repeating decimal part, is not going to change at all. So what we are going to do is, since we have n decimal places, which are going to repeat all the time, what we are going to do is we are going to multiply r with 10 to the nth power, meaning, 10 to the nth power times r is going to result in basically the same thing that we have discovered here. What we are going to do is we are going to take p and we are going to drag it to the front and then dot, well our periodic part is just going to repeat itself all the time. 
Meaning, on the one hand, we got r, which is hence nothing other but 0 dot p, repeating, and 10 to the nth power times r is going to result in p dot p repeating all the time. And now what we are going to do is we are going to subtract r from 10 to the nth power times r. And this is going to unfold really nicely. Now, 10 to the nth power times r minus r is going to be. I mean, r is a common factor here, so overall if we factor it out, this is 2 to the nth power minus 1 times r, which is going to result in, I mean, we also know what the values of um, r and 10 to the nth power times r are, <laughs> respectively. Namely, on the one hand, we got p dot p repeating minus 0 dot p repeating. Okay. Actually, this right here is going to turn into something very nice. Um, I want you guys to remember what a decimal um, number looks like in general. If we have 69.69 repeating, this is the same as taking our integer 69 and adding 0 0.69 repeating to it. Meaning what we have here is at first our um, decimal part or our integer part. Okay, this is our integer part, not the decimal part. We are going to extract our integer part from it, so p plus, and what we are going to be left with is basically our fractional part, 0 dot p fractional, okay, um, repeating. Now what we got here is p plus 0 dot p repeating minus 0 dot p repeating. I mean this and that is going to cancel out, leaving us overall with ah, just p. Okay, so what we did by solving this system of equations that we're having here is we extracted our repeating decimal part from it. Meaning overall this right here is also equal to what we got here. Let me write it out real quick. 10 to the nth power minus 1 times r. And now we got this. Meaning what we can now do is we can divide both sides by 10 to the nth power minus 1 under the condition that um, n is not equal to 0 but then we wouldn't have this whole situation with a repeating decimal part. Leaving us overall with an expression for our r. Okay, Our r is our repeating decimal like 0 0.69 repeating being hence nothing other than p divided by 10 to the nth power minus 1. Now this seems kind of abstract and in class I wouldn't do it with six graders like this. I would take a certain number like 0 0.69 repeating and would just go through this very same process that we have here just with um, concrete numbers. But we are mathematicians here and we can turn this abstract thing what we have here into numbers now. Okay so we generalized it and now we can plug in certain numbers. For example let us take our example that we have here 0 0.69 repeating. So what you basically do is you take the repeating part, okay, indicated by the bar over this thing, 69, okay, so for our example, r is going to be nothing but, okay, 69 to the top, divided by, okay, now you are going to count how many decimal places we had which are going to repeat over time, okay, 69, those are two decimal places, meaning what we're going to get is 10 squared minus 1. 10 squared minus 1, okay, 10 squared is nothing but 100, minus 1 is going to give you 99. Ah, 69 over 99. Now those have a common factor of 3, okay? So this right here is nothing but 3 times 23. This is the prime factorization of 69. This is very nice. Divided by 3 times 33. And you notice that this and that is going to cancel out, giving you 23 over 33 which is the reason why I saw immediately that you are going to get this repeating decimal out on the other side. Now what about another example? Um, it's actually a very nice procedure. So what you do here all the time is you just take the decimal repeating part and then what you do is you divide it by all the decimals that you have here just with a 9 under it all the time. Uh, let us take another example. It's a pretty easy procedure and this is basically the monomic device I give my students all the time when dealing with stuff like this. So we got 0 0.12345 and this is going to repeat up until infinity. And what you're going to do now is you're going to take the repeating part 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and now you're going to put a 9 under it all the time. 9, 9, 9, 9, 9. Okay, and that's what you're going to do and it's that easy. And that's how you're going to handle repeating decimals with a zero in the front. Next time around what we're going to do is we're going to take at numbers that could look like this for example um, 69.0555 so with the 5 repeating all the time. You have to handle those a tiny little bit differently algebraically but it's not too much of a big deal and I for myself think that this right here um, also gives you a very nice proof of um, why all repeating decimals 
doesn't matter the form, um, are actually rational numbers. So I might notice that all repeating decimals here of this form are also rational numbers because they are of this form. Something um, integer over something integer once again, meaning by definition they are going to be rational numbers. Yeah, this is all I want to cover for today and if you did enjoy what you saw today then you might as well also enjoy our today's sponsor brand who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. While spending a lot of time over on Brilliant during my free time or during my live streams, I actually learned a lot of new stuff in regards to elementary number theory, number theory, algebra and also calculus in general. And I'm very glad that I got to try out Brilliant for such a long time by now. With the nearly 70 interactive courses in science, computer sciences, all things STEM in general, be it astrophysics, quantum mechanics, mathematics, um, chemistry, they got you covered with everything. You want to learn something about redox reactions in chemistry, then go over there to Brilliant and you are going to find the course for you that is going to clarify all the doubts that you had up until now in this topic. Want to learn something about elementary number theory like repeating decimals, maybe also the topic that we are going to cover on Monday, go over there, they definitely have you covered. And also they are going to show you a bunch of very cool tricks in their contest mathematics course. And this is one where I learned a lot of cool tricks, be it with regards to factorious um, decimal numbers in general or the like. The contest mathematics course is actually uh, one course that I highly appreciate because they got some very nice tricks up their sleeve that I didn't know of before and that you probably also didn't know of before. So definitely check it out. If you want to try it out, if you think that Brilliant is something that you could benefit from, then make sure to check out the link at the top of the description. With it you can access a big portion of Brilliant for free already. And the first 20 people to actually make use of the link at 20% of an annual premium subscription, which is a really great deal considering how much content they got on their website already. So definitely make sure and check it out. If you did enjoy this video, then please like, subscribe, make a comment, channel like. If you want to see more stuff like this, then definitely um, share the videos around to um, raise some more attention that such a channel like this right here exists. And the more people we have, the more motivation I have to create more videos. So yeah, <laughs> definitely make sure to recommend the channel to a bunch of people um, that you know, maybe your classmate or your fellow mathematician at your university. And yeah, um, also check out the merchandise. We got kitty caddies here. And up until the next video, I wish you guys a flammable day. Please stay safe. Don't get caught by Corona. Ciao. <laughs>